All right, welcome to lesson three. We're going to create a wrapper in this video that should kind of contain all the subchildren in our application. So the way we're going to do that is to open up the sidebar here. You might remember that we've got a dashboard as our kind of base route. What I want to do is replace this with a main layout. And the easiest thing to do to kind of keep this organized is to create a new folder. We'll call it layouts. And then inside here, we'll have a main.jsx. Uh, all right, so it created a folder here and then main.jsx. What I'm going to do is actually start by just copying over all this dashboard right here and dropping this in. We need to change around a few things, though. So I'm going to change this to main loader. And then this, this, and this, hitting Command-D gives me access to all those at the same time. We'll just change this to main. So we're going to be exporting a main function here that will use a lot of the same things we've already been playing around with. And what I want to do is add one more thing to that, and that is to come over here. We're going to add something called an outlet. So if I start to type here, outlet like this, you should see React Router Down pulled this in. If I click or hit enter, it should import that up top. So right here, outlet from React Router DOM, and now I'm going to display it out here on the page. So this is like a slot if you've used other frameworks that use the concept of a slot, where you're basically saying any children that I'm going to pass down, I want you to drop right here in this outlet component. So that's what we're going to do. And what we're going to do is come back over here to the app.jsx. Let me close this down. And for now, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this down and replace the dashboard here with our main layout. If I start to type, it should auto import it, and it looks like it does. So let's go ahead and just add this as uh, layouts. It's going to be the only one we use, but <laughs> that's all right. Now, for now, uh, let's just go ahead and change this to main loader. So main loader, and that pulls that in right up here. Error element, that's just fine. What I want to do now is, though, is pass in some children. And you can do that by passing in children like this, and then this needs to be an array of items. And the items we're passing in are the same kind of things we've already been doing. So it's actually this object right here we're going to pass in. So what I'm saying is when I hit this base route, I want this element, my main, to kind of be the thing that you show. Load whatever data is here. There's error show here. And then any children that should be displayed in the outlet are going to be passed inside of this array. And the first thing I want is my dashboard to be the first child. And that's going to be at the base path, all right, which is the same as whatever the base path of the site is. Now, there's another way to do this down here. You could say index equals true. So it's basically saying at the index of this path, go ahead and show this element. All right, when I save it there, you can see it's actually showing me that, and I'm getting a double crisp because both the main and the dashboard show that. So let me come over to uh, the main over this way, and let's go ahead and just get rid of this. And let's change this to say something like main, just to show you exactly what's going on. And then I'll copy it down and put it below the outlet. So you can see I've got my main up here. This is all the dashboard content and then my main over here. So it's just wrapping whatever I pass into this outlet. So if I were to change this around, let's say I came back over here and let's come at this out and this out. And instead of the dashboard here, I had like an H2 that said like, yo, all right, <laughs> or something like that. Now you can see yo is in the middle of main and main. All right, so let's change that back. So that outlet is basically just dropping in whatever children match the kind of sub route that I give it. Of course, that means if I were to come down here and add another child, and again, we'd say something like path, and let's say about, in fact, you don't need that forward slash, you can just say about like that, and it will add that for you. And I pass in an element here, so I'll add a paragraph tag, and this will just say about. Now, if I were to come over here and go to the about route, you can see that now about is inside of those. So it's just gonna take whatever children match its sub route and go from there. Now, what happens if I pass in something that doesn't match anything? Well, I'm going to get my error element right up here. So for now, let's go ahead and leave that dashboard alone. I do want to come over here to the main, though, and add a couple of different things. The first thing I want to do is surround this outlet with main tags itself, and that way this is kind of the main content is inside here. Up top here, we're going to have a nav bar, which we'll do in a second. And down below, I just want to have an image that's kind of going to be like a decorative footer. So this will be an image tag. We're going to point it to an asset that we will import. Now, if you followed the instructions earlier, you should already have these in your assets folder. So we'll just say assets, import, and what we want is wave from go up a level to assets, and then we've got a wave.svg. All right, and then I want to use this wave right here as the, the name of this image. And by passing in an alt with nothing, this should basically hide it from screen readers because it's just decorative. It, they don't need to know there's a green uh, bar at the bottom. The other thing I want to do is add a class here. So class name, this will be called a layout. 
and that will style this properly to where this will always be on the bottom, our nav will be up top, and all the rest will fill the middle section. And then the final thing we need to do is to actually add a new element here called nav, and that's what we're gonna build out now. So let's create another folder, uh, and we'll call it components, and inside here we're gonna have nav.jsx. So any components we might use on multiple pages, I'm gonna do here. You can do this however you want to structure it, but that's how I'm gonna do it. So right here, we're gonna return a nav just like this. This will actually be inside of nav tags. So let's come back over here and import that right here. So I'll start to type nav and hopefully it gives that to me. Yeah, there we go. So this nav here should pull in. Let's see, where did it put it? Right here. Let's go ahead and just add this as like components. This keeps everything nice and organized. We've got React Router DOM, our assets, components, helper functions, our loader function, uh, and all this is displaying properly. Now this nav right here, I actually want to get access to whatever my username happens to be. So I'm gonna pass this in as a prop, username equals uh, username. So I'm getting this from the actual route itself and then passing it down to a component. That means if I come over here, I should be able to destructure here, username like this, and then I could display it here if I wanted to, username, and it should display Chris instead of nav. All right, so what I wanna do now is in this nav bar, just do a couple things for styling and then also talk a little bit about actions. Now to start with, let's come up here and we're gonna import another asset. So we'll say assets and import logo mark from, we're gonna to go to the same location, our assets folder. Inside our assets, we should have a logo mark dot SVG. And I wanna add that in right here as an image and the source here should be logo mark. I'm gonna actually give this a height of 30, and that way it kind of loads at a right size. All right, so there we go, we've got our logo mark showing, but I actually want this to be clickable, so it will always take me back to the home page. Now, you might be tempted to add like an anchor link or something like that, but with React Router DOM, you actually want to use the different components they give you because they will control the routing, and uh, then you're not reloading stuff you don't need to reload. So if I come over here, I'm just gonna import a nav link like that from React Router DOM, and it should show up right here. Let's go ahead again and say like React Router DOM imports. And this nav link is going to have a starting tag and it will have a closing tag. Now you can also use link. The difference is with nav link, it actually will set the link to like ARIA current page so that you know which link item, which nav item is for that current page. I'm gonna drop back in my image inside of here and then also set up a span that says like home budget. This home budget is the name of the application, so that's what I've got it passed in here. Now, for the nav link, you actually need to tell it where to point, just like you would like with an href, except you're going to use the to property, and I just want it to always point to my root directory. And then because this isn't super descriptive, let's actually add in an ARIA label, and this ARIA label will simply say home, or how about go to home, something like that. All right, so now if I come over here and I go to click, it should always take me to the home page. Now, of course, I'm already there, but if I were to go to something else random that doesn't exist, well, I guess we haven't handled that yet. So let's let's not worry about that for now. For now, basically, no, if you click here, it should take you to the home page. Now you'll notice because React Router DOM is handling this, it doesn't do like a refresh of the page. It actually just handles it in the background. So nothing looks like it's changing, but if I actually was on that route, it would take me to the home page. Now you'll remember we're getting a username here and what I wanna do is conditionally show something if I have a username. So just like this, we'll say username inside of curly brackets and we'll just say if that exists, then I wanna go ahead and show a form. Now this is one of the things when you're using this new create browser router that can kind of throw you off at first and that is we're kind of going old school with the web and using forms in a lot of different places because they can submit to different URLs and then React Router DOM can load things on those, uh, those routes or can run actions on those routes. So what we're going to do is actually use a form but not our own form, one from React Router DOM. And you can see if I start to type and I select this one right here, I can click or hit enter and it should pop it in up top here, or you can just manually type it. Now this form itself is something that React Router DOM will handle, and you can do a bunch of different things in here. To start with though, we wanna pass it a method. So method here, I want it to be a post method so I can actually send it data. And then you can pass it an action as well. This basically tells it what route to submit this form to and I'm gonna submit it to a route called log out. Now, before we do too much more, let's actually add a button inside of here. Now, you might remember in HTML, if you have a button inside of a form, by default, its type is submit, all right, which is a little funky, but basically, if you have a button inside of a form, it'll always submit that form, all right, unless you handle it in some way. 
What I want to do is actually add a couple classes to this just to style it better. So we'll say button and then button uh, warning. This is going to be a warning button for logging out. We'll add a span here that says something like delete user. And then I, I'm going to add an icon here in just a second. But for now, let's go ahead and just save this. You can see I've got delete user over here. I can come click this, and it should actually submit it using the post method to this route right here, this logout route, which we haven't set up yet. But if I click, you see it now goes to log out. So I'll go back just so we can get back to the home page. But here we go. This takes me home. This takes me to the logout route by submitting a form. Now, because it's submitting a form, I can actually handle that in my application. Now, I don't want people to be able to log out immediately. I actually want them to kind of have a check just to make sure that that's the case, and React Router DOM lets you do that. So you can have an on submit, just like you would in normal React, except in this case, I'm gonna take my event, and I'm gonna basically pass it if confirm, and then I can pass it a message. So in this case, I'd say like delete user and all data. And if that is the case, then I will say event dot prevent default. So what I'm checking on is saying, hey, I'm gonna ask them this question, if they say no, that's what this bang means, then go ahead and prevent the default. Don't submit the form. By default, when you submit a form, it refreshes the page or sends it to the action or whatever. So what I'm saying is, hey, don't do that. All right, so let's come back over here. If I go back to the home page, I click. Now I should get this little pop-up, delete user and all data. If I hit cancel, now it should prevent the default. However, if I come over here and I click OK, then it should send it to logout. All right, let's do one more thing before we actually handle that in a logout action. I want to add an icon right here. We're going to actually do it by importing a library called uh, Hero Icons. This is made by the makers of Tailwind. If we come over here to documentation, let's see, and scroll down, I should be able to just install it right here. So let's grab this. I'm going to open up my local terminal and kill it for a second and install Hero Icons React. Now, as you can see here, what all we have to do is import something and then actually display it down below. Even though I'm not using Tailwind, it's just fine. We're going to use it because I like these icons. All right, so let's close this down. And then I'm going to go ahead and let's add like, I don't know, library imports, something like that, library. And then we'll go ahead and add in, not a beaker icon, but that was a good start. We'll have a trash icon. And then all I have to do is add this down here as an element. And I'm going to give it a width of 20. So if I come back over here, now I should have a nice little trash icon, and it should change with the color based on the CSS that you imported at the beginning of this series. All right, so how do we actually handle what happens when I go over here and click OK, and it hits this logout? Well, that's where actions come in on React Router DOM. The very first thing I need to do is actually set up something for that route. Now we can set this up as a child route. Everything would be a child route technically of this. We can set it as kind of a main path as well, since it's already gonna be off of the index. Because it's technically a child route, like everything would be of the root route, let's go ahead and just add it in this children's array. And I'm going to say path, and what I'm going to pass is uh, log out. All right. So this path log out should be hit anytime I click that delete user. And I could do something like element here and just be like uh, paragraph of logged out. All right. Now we haven't done anything with that yet, but you can see if I come over here and click OK. I should get logged out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you see it's showing in right here, and it's actually showing in as a child element of this main path because I passed it in as one of its children. If I were to put it on the outside of this, so for instance, down here below, and we refresh this. Oh, and I need to move it one more down. Sorry, like that. All right, and I come over here and I click log out. You'll see now it's kind of its own route, and it's not inside of that wrapper. And I want it inside the wrapper, so let's go ahead and just leave it like that. Okay, so now it says logged out. Click here, it should go back to the home page, just like we said earlier. Now I actually don't want to display anything here. All I want to do is log the user out and go back to the main route. So I don't need an element, I actually just need an action. So when I hit this route, do this thing. And that's what an action is for. So I'll say action, and then I need to pass it some kind of function. Now I can write this inline, or I can import it, I can have it in a different file. And just to kind of keep stuff clean, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna have a log out action. Now for now, nothing is there, so it should yell at us if I save this. So let's come over here. Now we can do this in a couple different ways, but because this is simply an action, I'm going to come over here and add a new file. So let's call this folder actions, and then we'll call the file logout.js. Now here I want to export an async function. We'll call this logout action. And I want to do two things here. I want to delete uh, the user, and then I want to return a redirect. So in other words, as soon as I hit this route, 
do an action, and then send me somewhere else. So let's start with that redirect. So I'll return redirect. If I start to type here, React Router DOM should import that up top, and I want to redirect back to the home page. So for now, let me save this. I'll go back to the app, and then if I come back over here to lo log out action, I need to actually import this. So let's just call this something like uh, actions. And we'll import. Here, this will be log out action from log out. And it auto <laughs> imported that for me. So now if I come over here and click, and I click OK, it should redirect me to this home page. So nothing <laughs> visibly happens, but it actually is going to log out the user, and that's what I want. Now let's open back up this nav.js file. You'll remember that if there is no username, it shouldn't show this button anymore. So once we delete the username right here, it should actually delete this, which will give us a visual indicator that something has happened. The other thing that should happen is this will no longer display Chris because Chris won't be a user anymore since we've deleted it. Now, where are we going to write that function? Well, I'm going to do all those kind of helper functions inside of our helpers.js file. So we'll say something like delete user or delete item. How about that? Because we're going to use this in a couple of different other places. So we'll say export const delete uh, item. And here I'm going to actually pass it an object so I can pass in a couple of things. For now, we're just going to pass in a key. And I'll simply return local storage dot remove item, whatever the key happens to be. All right, so we've got that set and ready. Let's go come over here, though, and import that. So that was delete item, and here we go. It comes in up top here. Let's just add a little import statement here, like helpers up top here. This will be a reactor at our DOM imports. And the item we want to delete is our user name. And I need to actually set this inside of an object like this. So key is user name. Now, let me open up this app.js file and talk you through this again. So when we click this button, it should submit a form to this route, which will then run this action. This action I'm getting from the logout.js that I've exported, created here. It will do two things. It's going to delete the user using our little helper function, and then it will redirect us to the home page. That should get rid of this and get rid of this button. Okay, you want to test it out? Let's try. So if I hit cancel, it shouldn't do anything. If I come over here and click OK, here is the moment of truth. Well, that moment of truth stunk because something messed up. So let's see what's going on. Two hours later. Uh, so it was log out with a lowercase rather than uppercase, which is what I passed in. Come back over here, and now we've already logged out. And you can see here it doesn't have any matching element because it should redirect, although at this point the action is already done, so it can't. All right, so if I were to come back in here, and we were to add back in here a user name, and I said Chris, and we refreshed, it should show here. If I click here, it should now log me out and redirect me to the dashboard. All right, so a little trouble there at the very end just from the way we named that file. All right, hopefully you caught my note in the video about just the misspelling of log out there with a capital L versus a lowercase l. And if you got that right, then it should have logged you out just like it did for me here. While it's nice that this app logs you out correctly, it would be nice to show the user some kind of UI to say, hey, we've successfully logged you out. So we're going to do that in the next video.